I'll tell you what. And mind you, I'm sweating because I had to fucking march up so much stairs. Carry on my shopping. In the last week, and just the last week particularly, more middle-aged women, I would say, well, not really middle-aged, it's just before middle age, 45, between 45 and, 40, and 55, have been speaking to me at the gym, have been, have been saying hello at the bus stops, and they look like the cougar type. You could, I mean, they're in good shape. They're not ugly, but they're clearly older. And about between 45 and 55, they're, they're about. And they always, they've been introducing themselves in such a way they're trying to conjure, or they're trying to spark a conversation. I mean, for me, anyone more than a year old has always been seen as my fucking grandma. Uh, that's just how I am with women. And it's probably because. I was raised by my mother's grandparents uh, thoroughly, and although my mother raised me too, and is definitely and definitely mothered me, our relationship until this day is more like a older sister younger brother relationship. It always was. I was always seen as just an extension of you know Tino, Steve, and Mum, like the fourth brother, the fourth younger brother. That's how it's always been. So that's, for me, any woman older than a year, for me, is just like, it's like I'm dating my mum. That's weird shit. So uh, if you're a year older than me, you're almost like my grandmother. I'm just not, not going to be interested. It's just going to be weird shit for me. And again, particularly because of the way I was raised. You can call that a bias, but you know, good for you. Fuck off. <laughs> and, and on the flip side, anyone younger than uh, anyone five years and younger than me, they're about, you know, I'm not going to fucking count 5.2 years, but you get my point, any, any, anything around five years and younger is just very, even fucking weirder for me, because my sister's about nine and a half years younger than me, when she, when she was born in 90, yeah, nine, about, just about nine and a half years younger, almost exactly nine and a half years younger, so, and I, I, was, I pretty much fathered my sister from up until she was 10. When I got to about 19, 20 years old, I was just doing my thing. Not that she's not my little sister still, but any one younger than me by five years or so is just really, really weird. I mean, when you when you start to become about 25, 26 years old, for me, that's just like. I'm dating my sister. No fucking chance in the world. Yuck! So anything around there, it's just like a big no, no fucking chance at all. You know, my, you're, <laughs> yuck! Oh my god. So that is some funny shit. Um, but yeah, and what else? So it's just fucking weird, yeah? and it's it's almost like. It's women who are, they're all Caucasian, mind you. They're all typical Caucasian women with the Caucasian accent, what you would call your quintessential Australian. It's like these women are going through menopause and, you know, have this tes testicular energy because women have a strange testicular energy when they get to their 40s. It's like they become men and then they just dip after about 55, 60. They just start to become, oh, hi, would you like to come to my house and have some eggs with tea? Some shit like that. Um, <laughs> they go through this phase where they're very manly, more manly than most men, between the ages of, between the ages of forty five and fifty five. It's like a menopausal stage, and it's those women who are finding me. I don't know. Do they find me attractive? Is this Asia having another crack at me because they don't they don't like the idea that I'm just not going near women? They, they don't have anything. They don't have any. Swift card to play. Oh, look, he uses women. He uses older women. He's he's getting in their pants so he can fucking stay at their house for free, even though I've been fucking by myself for four years. What a fucking pathetic story that would be for them. So it's it's just strange in the last week. I mean, about four or five women have said hello to me at bus stops and, uh, and in, at the gym and all these weird places. I mean, you're talking to a bloke that can remember as far back as, a, you can say, as far back as I was born. I have a selective memory. 
but that's a very powerful thing. So if I ch if I don't choose to remember something because it's not interested interesting to me, it doesn't matter how good my memory is. I just won't recall it because I didn't zap it, so to speak. Um, so you may say, oh, oh, do you remember this and this and this? Mm -hmm. But you may, but I might say, hey, I remember this and this and this and this. And you go, what the fuck? How do you remember all that? It's like 25 years ago. Well, I found it interesting. So with me, I always find patterns interesting. Is is. There's never a time I don't find a pattern interesting. I'm just a pattern sort of person. Very mathematical brain, you could say, <laughs> hence the architecture. Uh, in terms of patterns and geometric figures, I just love geometry. I love anything geometric. I can usually guess how big something is just by looking at it. 90% of the time, I can get your height perfectly right just by looking at you on the centimeter, even sometimes the millimeter. I just have the eye for that in the mathematical brain. So patterns is something I just fucking love. I love patterns, and architecture is all about uh, architectural patterns, all sorts of um, planning patterns and all sorts of um, sustainability patterns. There's just patterns everywhere in architecture. That's why I love it so much. I just love, uh, I love the fact that pure architecture can be uh, symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, but it can also be asymmetrical, perfectly asymmetrical. And it's like you can bring chaos together in a harmonious fashion. It's very delightful, delightful to the eyes. And that's what architecture is to me. Chaos from nothing, making it something. Asymm symmetrical, asymmetrical, fucking sick, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, beauty. But the point is, so not to go off track too much, even though this is very much to do with what I'm saying, the point is, Anything to do with patterns is right in my alley. It's architectural to me. It's, it's like I remember every single pattern since the day I was born. Okay, so let me put it to you this way. In 33 years of my life, there has not been one occasion. Or no, sorry, I shouldn't say there's not been one occasion. Uh, yeah, I can put it that way. There has not been one occasion. Uh, one, a group of occasions in a short time where so many Caucasian women have introduced themselves to me. Uh, introduced themselves to me. So a pattern emerges, and that's how. I, and straight away, I, from those patterns, I can form reliable hypotheses. And obviously, you can't just say, "Yep, yeah, bang!" A hypothesis is gospel. It doesn't work that way. Science, it doesn't work that way. So you've got to test your hypotheses. You've got to see how true your hypothesis is. Ninety-nine percent of the time, they're actually right. So the uh, I don't form hypotheses based on complexes, biases, favoritism, on pure science, pure uh, mathematics, you could say to some degree, just on what it is, exactly what it presents itself as. And I, then I start to build a bigger picture as to why that could be. I'll get to that. But the point is, in 33 years, there's not been one occasion, or group of occasions to be exact, where in a very short space of time, a week to be exact, so many women have introduced themselves to me between the ages of 45 and 55, about four or five to be exact, and one of those women t turning up to the same place at the same time twice. Yeah. So it starts to get a bit obvious, especially within a week. I mean, in about 33 years, maybe two or three women have introduced themselves to me in a very sexual way uh, who were much older than me, five to ten years older than me. Other than that, not much at all. Uh, no, none. But, yeah, maybe two or three, three or four, something, thereabout. So for that many women to just suddenly come out of the blue in one week, I mean, I'm not famous. Nobody knows me. It's not like they've got a fucking satellite tracking device on me. So it must be a matter of Asia being cheeky and say, I think he goes to this bus stop at this time, woman. And they do that sort of stuff. I mean, these are the people who went out of their way to become a dating agency and set me up with uh, actress Sheila, who admittedly is within my uh, a special dating range. She's only two or three years younger than me. But anyway, I'm not going to go there. So, it's amazing how these women just come out of the fucking blue. And then I started thinking, I know it's fact, because of my mate in Canberra, who keeps giving me information, that these cunts want to fucking put something on me. They've got nothing. I just keep on fucking them up the ass. They've got nothing. And it's pretty obvious. It starts to become pretty obvious. They need a story. And mind you, they're in bed with the cops. The cops in Asia, you can pretty much say, are fucking one and the same, especially at the tactical level. Ta at the tactical cop level, you can pretty much call them Asia. It's just, that's how, how it works. You probably don't know that, but now you do. 
So they probably want some fucking silly story where, oh, this cunt uses all the women people and does this and that and fucking blah, blah, blah. They want to write some fucking pathetic story when I'm the opposite of that. I don't use people. I let people use me sometimes. I, I, I'm that sort of person. I, I will help you if you need help and you're a genuine person. Otherwise, if you're a bad person, I tend to treat you like a fuck. <laughs> Everyone knows how I treat the cops. In a, in part, in half of Asia, not the better half. So, uh, what a fucking... What a bunch of shit. I've been living alone since 2018, 19. And best, best times of my life. So I don't depend on anybody. I go, to, I go to see my old man every now and again. Or my grandfather. I call him my old man because he's like my old man and my father. I go and visit him every now and again to see he's in good shape. He's in good order. I give him some... I give him advice these days. not the other way around. Health advice. I keep telling him you're, you've got the heart of a fucking lion. You can live to a fucking 200. But just you've got to take care of yourself. And he can. He's a very strong man. He's, where do you think I get my strength from? I pretty much inherited all his genes. Right now, looking at this phone, I don't look very different to him. Uh, so I do look a lot like him. And he's, a, he's got the heart of a lion, and he's very strong even for his age. Stronger than most fucking 20, 30-year-old men. Very, very strong, uh, and still very fit. So I see him every now and again. Do you need the lawns mowed? Do you need a tree done? Uh, cut? Do you need me to cut the tree? Do you need me to cook? Do you need me to do this? He's always got it taken care of, so and he probably will for the next 20 years. But I just go there anyway because I fucking love him. Um, I don't go and visit my mum and my grandmother that way because there's fucking three women in the house so they can fucking take care of themselves. <laughs> They've got it all handled. One woman could should be right. My grandmother would be right by herself. But three of them, Jesus. I, so I just go see my grandfather, see how he's doing. And he's doing fine. He's doing good. And that's how I am, so... Doesn't look good with all these fake reports, fake stories that the cops have written. God knows what's in there. I haven't looked at that part. There's like, seriously, there's like three or four thousand pages of shit they've written on me, and I've only gone through about two hundred. Uh, and that's not a fucking joke. I'm not fucking with you. This is the, these are this is the information my mate sat phones to me. I'm just not allowed to uh, put it on the internet. I'm not allowed to disclose exactly what I know. I'm not allowed to disclose any names. I'm not allowed to do all this sort of stuff. So long as it's him in his position in Canberra and what he does, so long as it's him giving me the information when I want it because it's concerning me, uh, and so long as it's on my through my sat phone and I don't do anything with it and I delete it straight away, uh, they can't do fuck all. Because it's, it's pretty much like uh, it's all him. So it, it, there's a loophole there, and he's explained it to me before, and it's a very good loophole. They can pretty much shove a cactus up their ass and, and fuck themselves with it. In other words, there's nothing they can do to him. He can have them sacked in a fucking jiffy if they want to take him on. <laughs> He's that sort of luck. Uh, and I've, I've known him since fucking high school. Well, I've, I've known him before that. I've known a lot of people since high school and even before high school. But we go we go that way back. You know, and I used to talk to my mates about him, especially especially fucking even speaking like I was a kid when I was a kid. <laughs> especially especially. And my friend Mahmoud, who I always used to talk about, my mate, my government mate. And he used to go, oh, who's your government mate? You don't, you, don't, you worry, you fuckhead. So I thought of him today, and I fucking gave him an SMS to remind him of where I am and my number. So he can call me back one day and say, hey, fuckhead, fuck you for speaking against my religion. <laughs> he knows I love him, no matter what the fucking prick has said and done. Anyways... Uh, so I can imagine all the shit they're conjuring in all those other pages. It probably says things like, oh, he uses his relatives for money, or he got nice cars from his relatives, and blah, 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 blah. But they won't know the, they won't know the part that I paid 25 grand back, will they? Of course not, no, because they're fucking cockheads and cocksuckers. But anyway, um, <laughs> and they won't know the part that I paid for my house all alone, even though most other kids don't and get a massive hand from their parents. Yeah, I bought my property outright alone, and when I was 20, was I 28? I was about 27 or 28. I could have been 27. So, I'm first property outright by 27, 28. No help from parents, just the cars. And I did, I still got to pay them a little bit more back. So, I'm sure they don't have that in their reports, but they probably have some really sick shit in their reports. So, it starts to make sense because I've always had help from older people, so they're probably trying to concoct something with them, mates from Asia who can see everything and anything. Uh, that I'm going for the older Sheilas. So the older Sheilas are now going for me. 
And look, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not interested in Caucasian women altogether, with, even in the dating range. But fuck it, at 45, 55, especially the fucking, uh, that aggro Caucasian type. I mean, they're nice at first, and then they're all of a sudden, go cut some cheese for me, you fucking cunt. Go get my fucking shoes. Yeah, fuck you. I, I just, bleh. I'm not really interested in the Caucasian women, especially ones that are fucking 45. Fuck me. I'll be out in about a minute. <laughs> I'll fucking run. You can keep my fucking house. Let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. The fucking 45 year old, 55 year old woman. That's fucking, that's like the devil. My mother's 55. So that's just disgusting. No, she's not 55. How old's mum? Oh, Jesus. My mum's only 53. Yeah, my, my, my mother's 53. I mean, there are many people whose parents... Some people are in their teenage years and their mother's 53. Yeah, I have a young mum. My mum's 53. So that just shows you how old I am and how old she is. Yeah, mum's 53. Well, no, we don't come into 52. That's ridiculous. She's 53. So, yeah. Every time I turn something, she turns the same. Um, and yeah, that's just disgusting. Women as old as my mother. Get the fuck out of my face. Oh my God. Fuck, these people are funny. All of a sudden, just out of nowhere, fucking white sheilas who are in their fucking late 40s and early 50s trying to hit up a conversation in a very sexual, provocative way. Hi. <laughs> Get fucked. 